with a WWE legend advised by doctors to not make his return and more. This is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. Touching on goals for herself in pro wrestling, Becky Lynch told Mark Andrews, I do want to win the Money in the Bank briefcase before it's all said and done, and also wrestle Beth Phoenix. I've been trying to get her for years. She's been dodging me. Every single Money in the Bank match I've been in, I've always been the second last person. We're talking four Money in the Bank ladder matches. I've been the second to last person. Talking about his training with Olympic gold medalist and WWE prospect Gable Steveson, Ken Anderson said on Kurt Angle's podcast, he's really taken to it. He's one of those guys, I remember, he took his first bump and I told him, get up this way, and he got up the wrong way. Before I even said anything, he just went, oh, reversed himself back down and did it almost perfectly the first time. People will often say that Kurt took to the business like nobody they've ever seen before, that he got it immediately, and you got not only the athletic side of things, but you got the showmanship the storytelling, and the character stuff. I feel like Gable is on that path. He can do great things. He's young. He's very young, but he's already a man. You know, he's very young, but when I'm talking to him, he seems you're talking to an old soul like he's in his 30s. While SmackDown brought in over 2 million people for their show on Friday, which featured more world title tournament matches, someone was missing as Ringside News noted. SmackDown was a good show this week, but they were missing a huge piece of the puzzle. We were told that Triple H wasn't backstage at all this week. He had to miss the show, which is very rare for him. When it came to responsibilities for the night, it was added that the timing was squarely on Bruce and Ed Koski, but it's Pritchard's responsibility more than Koski's. Noting what is in store for the World Heavyweight title in WWE as Seth Rollins takes on AJ Styles on Night of Champions for the Belt, Boozer666 said, There are big plans for the new World Heavyweight Championship title. It will have a story that will catapult the title to its original status, all in soon to come plans. Speaking to WrestleBinge about plans to change his theme music in WWE, Mustafa Ali noted that with the Real American Hulk Hogan's old theme music, yeah, that was an actual discussion I had. At one point, that was going to be my entrance music. The reason for that is a few years ago, we were laying the groundwork for me to do this politician-esque character. There wasn't going to be anything political specific about this character. He was just presented as a politician. The whole emphasis was I would be launching campaigns, whether it be against my opponent or for a title opportunity so everything in the background was just very politically motivated as far as the presentation. I remember talking to Vince at the time and saying, hey, you know, it would really get this character over because there's nothing more American in this world than Mustafa Ali. What if I came out to Real American? He was quiet. I go, we own that song, right? Do we still own Real American? He goes, of course we do. God damn it. I go, okay, so what if I came out to it? He goes, I love it. I love it. As of that meaning, I had it. And I think in a few weeks, we were going to re-debut me as this political character. And that was going to be my music, but the decision was made that the character might not work for the networks and live audience, so it was pulled. Speaking of Hulk Hogan, Paul White said this at the For the Love of Wrestling event about the Hulkster nearly not working with him. Oh yeah, I've done a moonsault. It's funny. I used to do drop kicks off the top. I've done moonsaults. The moonsault thing got killed. The one time I did it, it wasn't in a live event, and it's before they had cell phone cameras, so there wasn't any documented evidence of it, but it got around, and I got back to my hotel, and my hotel phone had a message light, and I think I was in Japan, and so I called. I picked up the message, and it was Hulk Hogan who wanted me to call him 
collect from Japan. Because this is before cell phones, so I called Hulk and Hulk told me flat out if I ever did a moonsault again, he'd never work with me again and hung up. Giants don't do moonsaults. When I first started, I was way too athletic for my size and what the industry was used to for a big man and what the industry wanted from me as a giant. I wasn't as athletic as Undertaker by any means, but it was a giant that was way too athletic than to be a giant, so it was a hard struggle early in my career to figure out who I was supposed to be. Talking about Bad Bunny's entrance at Backlash last weekend, Corey Graves said on After the Bell, Bad Bunny's entrance was one of the most incredible things that I've ever experienced in my life. Being in the arena and hearing 18,000 plus scream every word to his entrance music in that moment had that roof literally detached from Colesio de Puerto Rico, no one would have been surprised. Bad Bunny is one of, if not the biggest stars in the entertainment space right now. I think this would be more similar to having someone the caliber of Michael Jackson or Beyonce, someone that red hot in the entertainment world being a part of WWE. We... According to Rebby Hardy, the Twitter account of Matt Hardy has been hacked, with the profile putting out messages such as, maybe Chris Benoit wasn't that bad? If I was Edge, I would have effed Lita too. And, Vince McMahon, send me my money back or I'll release the video of me effing your wife Linda, and no, I don't care if she's a government official. With wrestling shoot interviews, former WWE and ECW star Shane Douglas recalled getting injured during a match with Scott Holiday House Show for WWE where he said, It's turning to a nightmare, right? I said, Doctor, this is my last night working with this a-hole. Look, it's fake wrestling. What's the worst thing that can happen? His reply to me was, You can end up sexually dysfunctional in a wheelchair for the rest of your life or both. Well, that's the magic phrase, I'm done. Vince says, asks the same thing. What's the worst thing that can happen? He said this young man can end up in a wheelchair. I'm looking at Vince, he didn't even blink when this guy said that so he turns to me now and he comes up our chests we're touching and he goes dean do you agree with this diagnosis douglas continued i put my hand on his chest and i pushed him and i'm not qualified to agree or disagree with that diagnosis and vince did this little hissy fit dance like this and turned in the corner and walked intentionally towards me and shoulder thumped me like tackling me and it twisted me the doctor had to grab but when he did it turned me Hangman Page, who has been absent from TV since being attacked by the Blackpool Combat Club, would make his return to AEW at an event to face Big Bill last night, where he would be seen sporting what appears to be an eye patch. Recalling her Valentine's Day date with Dominic Mysterio, SmackDown Women's Champion Rhea Ripley told Wrestling with Rosenberg, Yep, that thing was quite hilarious. That was a lot of fun to cause that sort of mayhem with the Mysterio family. At the end of the day, like Ray stole our table. We were in the right. Yes, Dom put it down under the Mysterio name, but at the end of the day, Ray called and was like, Yeah, we're on our way, and he took our table. So of course, we're gonna kick him out. Like, that's just what happened. Like, move, it's Valentine's Day. This is our first Valentine's Day date, and we want to eat here. This is why we booked it here but he did give me a little bit of a chuckle when he wanted chicken fingers at a nice restaurant he's a simple man no one said he's a complicated man he's definitely not it's great With former New Japan star Kota Ibushi now a free agent, Dark Pure Wrestling Flosion gave an update on his future writing. As I stated yesterday, New Japan Pro Wrestling has an offer in for Kota Ibushi. He told me AEW is his number one priority still. Priority number one is Golden Lovers. Giving details on the previous contract expiration of Leva Bates in AEW, Sean Ross Sapp noted that we're told that Leva's contract situation was a unique one and that she was surprised by the news. Bates' deal had expired and those close to her said that AEW didn't have a conversation with her about renewing the deal. Some of the company found out when an email went out notifying that they were not renewing the deal. Bates was said to have found out when people contacted her to check on her. Bates was originally brought in as a wrestler but was transitioned into a number of backstage roles starting in 2020 
2022, she'd become more active in the ring, most recently competing in AEW in February. There were several in AEW that upon hearing the news pushed for her to remain with the company, but we haven't heard that there are plans to do that. Bates was heavily influential in the AEW Heels group and putting those events together. Bates' statement on social media was also applauded by many in the company as the circumstances surrounding her finding out she was leaving were less than ideal. During a Q&A session online, former NXT Women's Champion Mandy Rose would be asked about a potential return to WWE as she replied, um, I don't know. I don't know what the future holds. So, of course, Rose would be released from WWE due to her online adult content as it remains to be seen if she will come back. As Drew McIntyre's WWE contract is set to expire this year, this was said by the Wrestling Observer Newsletter about the possibility of him making his debut in AEW for their upcoming show in London in August. Regarding McIntyre and the idea that he could be at all in, there is basically almost no chance of that. His contract expires months after that date, so even if he were to leave WWE when the deal expires, a big if, and goes to AEW, which would be the most likely destination if he were to leave, that can't happen until 2024. Also, WWE is likely to tack on all of his current period when he's been out of action with an injury that would move the end of his deal back. With Randy Orton having been out of action since last year to recover from back fusion surgery, it seems that he has been advised to not make a WWE return. As his father and WWE Hall of Famer Cowboy Bob Orton told Bill Apter, he's training, so we'll see what happens. I don't know. If he feels like he's ready to go back, I think he might, but again, he's pretty well taken care of. I don't think he needs to, and I think the doctors have told him not to, but Randy will do what Randy wants to do. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all later.